Hi there, so today we are talking about the fast Fourier transform, the most important of them all, because it's the only applicable transform that you can use in practical applications and it can deal with uh, periodic and non-periodic functions at the same time. Now, to begin with uh, this transform, we shall introduce a motivation in the beginning. Uh, if you remember from the previous video, the definition of the discrete Fourier transform was x of f equals summation x of n e to minus j 2 pi fn. Now, the problem is with this transform, we can't plot x of f using a computer. We can't even compute x of f because f is a continuous variable and if you remember from the ddft video that in the in the beginning x of n was actually a continuous signal it was x of t before we sampled it and it has a, it had a spectrum something like this And then we sampled it and we got x of n and the spectrum became something like this. It became periodic, which is given by x of f. But it remained continuous. So this is a continuous signal, which we can't plot using a computer. So we have to sample, which means f. that the computer can only calculate x of f at certain so the f question values. Is, can we sample x of f? And what are the uh, sampling restrictions? Well, according to what I have called the modified Nyquist sampling criteria. then yes we can sample x of f basically because x of f is just a function like x of t well in, in a different variable f and this doesn't really matter but the principle still holds and by taking advantage of uh, the duality of the Fourier transform we will try to find out the restrictions of this sampling. Now you might remember from the previous videos that a time domain signal can be sampled on condition that it has a spectrum that is band limited. I mean it has a spectrum like uh, like this. It has a maximum frequency like FM which means it has a limited bandwidth. Similarly we can say a spectrum can be sampled on condition that its time domain correspondent has a limited, well, not a bandwidth, but let's just call it a support or an interval. So let's say x of t uh, shall be something like, like this. So it has this is a time domain. It has a finite support, a finite interval where x of t is non-zero. So this is the first condition of sampling a spectrum. It must have time domain correspondent with a finite support. Uh, the second issue is what is the adequate rate? Uh, that is required to sample the spectrum. Well, again, using the duality property, um, when we sample the time domain signal with a correspondent bandwidth of uh, a correspondent spectrum with FM as a maximum frequency, the, mi the minimum sampling rate required for X of T was 2 FM, which is basically the bandwidth of the signal. So similarly, 
The minimum sampling rate required to sample a spectrum, which is measured in uh, sample per hertz, let's just call it Fs prime, the sampling rate of the spectrum, the minimum sampling rate required equals to the support of the time domain signal. Let's call it so if the T. regular NACO sampling criterion mentions that Fs has to be larger than or equal to the bandwidth of the signal, then what I've called the modified Nyquist sampling criterion mentions that Fs prime should be larger than or equal to capital T as measured in sample per hertz. While this is measured in sample per second units. Now let me do a simple yet important review of what was going on throughout the latest videos. In the beginning we had a continuous signal x of t that has a, a spectrum something like this x of f and we intended to find this spectrum but we didn't know how to do this so we had to sample this signal And what happened to the spectrum, according to the Nyquist sampling criterion, is the following. It starts repeating itself. And now we're trying to sample this spectrum. So it will be like this. So what will happen to the time domain signal after we have sampled its spectrum? The answer, obviously, according to the duality, is that the time domain signal will start to repeat itself. Well, be something like this. So here comes the fast Fourier transform. It takes a discrete signal and gives you a discrete spectrum. Now let's move on to proceed our FFT derivation. In the beginning, in the Fourier transform, look at the kernel e2 minus j2 by ft. We decided to sample the time. So t was replaced by nts and we got the ddft. And now we're trying to sample the frequency to get the fast Fourier transform. So if you remember, according to the modified sampling criteria, uh, we said that Fs prime minimum required was equal to the support of the signal, which is capital T. Now the signal in time, which was x of t, so this is the support of the signal, capital T. However, we have sampled the signal to, to this. With sampling interval of Ts. This means that Capital T can be determined by the sampling interval and the number of samples. So you can say T equals to N times T, where capital N is the total number of samples. Now, replacing F by K times 1 over NTS, where K is the discrete index, and NTS is the minimum sampling rate of the spectrum. Now we can eliminate Ts with Ts and we ended up with Kn So this is the fast Fourier transform. 
this very brilliant great transform that you will not Until appreciate. you see the numerous applications. So, finite number of samples in time from 0 to n minus 1, so n total number of samples, and finite number of discrete frequencies, actually k, can run from 0 to n minus Which 1. Which means we also have a total of n discrete frequency samples. Uh, I'd like to point out a couple of notes. Uh, first of all, the fact that mm, the number of time domain samples or discrete time samples are finite is not actually a new restriction because the, the computer cannot deal with an infinite number of samples, which, which is the same restriction that forced us to sample the time domain signal. So it's not actually a new restriction. Uh, the second thing is uh, about the let's say inverse fast Fourier transform which will be something like this x of n summation from k equals 0 to n minus 1 x of k e to plus j 2 pi k n over capital n where n runs only from 0 to capital n minus 1 which is and if you tried samples. more n values outside this range simply x of n will start to repeat itself so outside the range from 0 to n minus 1 the signal will start to repeat itself that's because we have sampled the frequency domain and similarly if you try to plot the spectrum for a range outside this from 0 to n minus 1 the spectrum will also repeat itself because we have sampled the so time. a periodic discrete time domain signal into a periodic discrete frequency domain And the signal. last thing I'd like to point out is that uh, throughout this derivation, the time domain sampling was done at a rate of fs. Uh, may it may be larger than the minimum sampling rate, which is f Nyquist. But the frequency sample, the frequency sampling was done at the minimum critical rate. I think you'll get a, a better understanding of this issue when we start the tutorials in math. That's why zeros are padded to the time domain signal to increase the frequency Now, the resolution. last thing I'd like to show you in this video is how the fast Fourier transform is used to handle both non-periodic signals and periodic signals at the same time. Well, let's begin with the non-periodic signals. Uh, if you have a signal like x of t that is non-periodic, like this, well, first of all, you have to sample it because f of t only deals with discrete signals. Okay, so here we are. So let's call this x of n. You have to sample it adequately. And the FFT will give you a discrete periodic version of the original non-periodic continuous spectrum of x so of t. So this is x of k given by the FFT. This is k discrete frequency index. Or if we have a periodic signal like this square wave then first of all you have to sample it but can we sample a periodic signal well this actually depends on its spectrum if it has a band limited spectrum let's say this is C sub n and this is n first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic. Let's assume that the fourth harmonic is the largest frequency contained. So we can say fm equals to 4 if not. This is the maximum frequency contained. So if it has a finite number of harmonics, then yes, we can sample it according to the Nyquist sampling criterion. So after choosing an adequate sampling rate, we got x of n. Then using the fast Fourier transform, applying FFT. Well, it will give you the spectrum itself. It will actually give you the exact 
discrete spectrum of a non-periodic signal. Why? Well, if you remember the formula of CK from the Fourier series, the complex Fourier series, it was 1 over, uh, I don't know, 1 over t integration from 0 to t, and then x of t e to minus j 2 pi n f naught t dt, where f naught was the fundamental frequency. But we've sampled x of t, so this will eventually get to x of n, n equals 0 to capital N minus 1 over a single period of this discrete periodic signal and then e to minus j 2 pi nf naught and t is replaced by nts. Uh, well actually there's a problem here. Uh, ck, so this will be 2 pi kf naught. k is the index of harmonics, okay? So 2 pi k, and then we sample t by nts. Yes, that's right. But f naught, which is the which is the fundamental frequency, which is one over t, and t is actually n times t s. So we can eliminate t s, and then we get summation x of n e to minus j two pi k n over capital N, which is the definition of the fast Fourier transform. And that's a very interesting point, which, because it means that the fast Fourier transform is actually discrete Fourier series. And this will be uh, the topic of my next video, which will introduce the FFT in a whole independent, different approach based on discrete Fourier series. That's I would like to soon, summarize for now, all the ideas that were presented in this video. So if you have a discrete signal, x of n, something like this, and you applied the FFT, and you got something like this. So this is the k domain, and this is x of k function. Let's say something like this. Then you have two approaches to understand this spectrum. First one is this spectrum, which you have got by applying FFT to this X of N, is actually a discrete replicated version of the original non-periodic and continuous spectrum of the original continuous non-periodic time domain signal which this signal have been derived from. Or, second way to understand the spectrum is you can say this is a replicated spectrum of this discrete periodic signal. So you have, you have assumed that this is a periodic signal but this is only one period. Okay, so you've assumed that this is actually a periodic signal. And what you have seen earlier was only a single period of it. If so that's it for this video. If you have mastered all the Fourier transform variations that I've introduced until now from the Fourier series to the fast Fourier transform, then come and watch my upcoming I'll video all these which transforms I and manipulate each and every single parameter and interpret what's going on. It's coming soon. See you then. Goodbye.